think of Sophia mostly as sort of catching light. Day after day, we can get up and do these missions and really do really cutting edge uh, astronomy in the infrared spectrum. SOFIA is an observatory, and like other observatories around the world, it can do a lot of different science. A lot of those observatories are on the tops of mountains, around 13 or 14,000 feet. Even when we have a ground-based telescope in a perfect place, sometimes it doesn't get any data because the clouds come in. Um, being able to fly over all of that is just a tremendous asset. What happens is in the upper atmosphere of the Earth, as the light comes down you know, from some astronomical object, uh, very little of that light is able to pass all the way down to the ground. So what SOFIA does is it flies above the bulk of that water in the atmosphere. But SOFIA can fly at 43,000 feet, more than double the height of all of the other observatories in the world. And that is above 90 percent of the water vapor, and that's a position that is necessary for astronomers to do infrared astronomy. Space-based observatories have some really unique aspects to them. They're always in space, they're very cold, they can observe around the clock day in and day out. The spacecraft, the demand on low weight, low power consumption are very extreme. So in an airborne observatory you have a lot of power, a lot of space available. We can carry instruments that are hundreds of pounds. We can give those instruments much more power than you can generate from solar collectors in space. Uh, we're not limited to the minimum weight that launch vehicles require to put something into space. We can fix those instruments day after day. The airplane comes home, we can repair them. It's very, very challenging to ever repair anything in space, and it's been done very, very few times. The plane provides this motion as the telescope provides this motion, and together you're actually able to track a target as it moves across the sky, as it's rising and setting. Not only does it have to be aware of time and position, but it's also got to be making the right motions across the surfaces of the Earth so that combined motions allow us to be able to lock onto the object over periods of a couple of hours. One of the powerful benefits that SOFIA brings us is the ability to go chasing these occultations in a way that no other observatory can do. An occultation is basically a situation where a planet or an object of interest moves in front of a background star. We uh, observed uh, a Pluto occultation. So that was where Pluto fell in our line of sight with a background star and made that star's light blink out very momentarily. They modeled where that shadow was going to be and we flew this airplane at roughly 500 miles an hour to catch a shadow that was going across the surface of the Earth at 53,000 miles an hour. Simply by looking at the way that the background light blinked out uh, tells us something about the shape of the object, whether that object has um, an atmosphere or not, and you can even determine um, things like how the atmosphere's temperature and pressure vary from the ground all the way up to the top of that atmosphere on that object. You are limited as to what parts of the sky you can actually observe uh, when you're in the northern hemisphere. So deployments out of our home base here in Palmdale gives us access to one half of the sphere. And when we go down to New Zealand, we'll have access to a whole new set of objects, a whole new part of the sky. Infrared astronomy allows you to peer into the core of really cold gas clouds where the stars are starting to form. Planets, comets, 
dust particles. So look at star formation in extreme regions. These things, because of their cold temperatures, happen to radiate most of their energy at these infrared wavelengths that SOFIA studies. SOFIA actually has several different instruments. The science instruments receive the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the light, through the telescope. Instruments mean cameras, or photometers, or spectrometers. Uh, the telescope without instruments is totally useless. We have a whole team uh, whose job is to prepare the instruments and do a very precise movement, a choreographed uh, movement of one instrument off the airplane and another one on. Some of them make pictures that will look a lot like something that would have come out of a digital camera, but of course at a different wavelength. Others will not look like a picture at all. One of the biggest challenges, of course, is we're putting a large hole in the side of the airplane. The telescope in total is uh, 17 metric tons, and there's an additional three tons distributed in electronic racks all over the aircraft. The telescope has a certain level of precision. The instruments require a certain level of precision and accuracy in order to conduct the science. And the engineering challenge of providing that stability on an airplane that's flying and encountering turbulence is a significant challenge. We had major structural modifications that had to happen. We had to add an additional bulkhead uh, just forward of the telescope so that we can maintain a pressure area where people can work. And then the aft area is vented to the outside as we open the door. The telescope is operated when a large door is open, so the environment is not very benign. The telescope is something that is designed to free float. It floats on a spherical bearing, and that allows the telescope to be somewhat isolated from the movement of the aircraft. Inside Sophia, it's like flying on any other airliner. Planning for about a 10 hour mission, hopefully about eight and a half hours worth of science out of that. We do pre-flight checks on all the airplane systems and all the observatory systems, fuel up the airplane. We go into a crew brief in the late afternoons where the entire team that's going to fly on the airplane gets together, talks about the objectives for the flight, status of all the systems, the weather and the mission plan ahead. The team goes out and does their pre-flight checks on the airplane, start engines, we take off, climb to altitude and do whatever mission's planned for that night. Usually it's about a 10 hour flight. We know before we even get on the plane what objects are going to be looked at, at exactly what time in the flight they're going to be looked at. It's all sort of planned out and choreographed like a complicated dance routine. SOFIA is a unique blend of aeronautical capabilities, science engineering in the form of a state-of-the-art telescope, and then cutting-edge science instruments. We have the U.S.-German partnership, which is the 80% U.S. and 20% German. We were responsible for developing and delivering and support the integration of SOFIA's infrared telescope. On board, there's probably about 20 to 30 personnel, along with USRA personnel, our science support personnel, or mission ops. We also have multiple NASA centers, NASA Ames, primarily responsible for the science, and NASA Dryden responsible for the aircraft operations. It takes that total group of expertise together that makes SOFIA an operational telescope. Sometimes I think that my kids think science is done by some person sitting in a lab or up on a mountain with a telescope all by themselves. Have them see that it's really such a team effort, I think it's important. Losing instruments from Germany does not mean that they can only be used by a German institutions. So those instruments can be used also by, uh, by U.S. institutions, by other institutions. This facility is not being built for NASA. We are providing it for the science community, for future scientists, and for educators. Through those teachers, there are Airborne Astronomy Ambassadors Program, and they'll be able to extend a lot of what we learn on SOFIA into the classroom.
Sophia science is driven by the demands and the imagination of the community. The thing I get satisfaction over is seeing a team succeed themselves. And whether that be technicians installing electrical components or scientists uh, getting the data that they receive or a teacher getting a good experience on board um, to take back to their classrooms. So Sophia is considered to be an international resource to be used by the global community of astronomers. We hope to truly inspire students, scientists, engineers, mechanics, pilots, so anyone in a great school classroom right now, depending on what their interest is, they can see themselves operating SOFIA in the next 10 to 15 years. There are a lot of open science questions that have been open for, quite frankly, a very long time. Creativity and inquiry is what's going to lead SOFIA to discovery and to answering a lot of outstanding questions over the next 20 years of its life.